Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Elizabeth Rogliani. For those of you who don't know me, and before I get into it, the episode of the day that involves a certain congresswoman I don't particularly like in New York City, make sure to subscribe. I invite you to subscribe and like and like this video. And of course, I invite you to go over to my Instagram where I share my opinion on everything culture, sometimes religion, and politics almost daily. Sometimes I have to take a break. So AOC. I'm not gonna lie to you. I have a bias against her. I don't like her very much, you know, because she really does remind me of someone that would perfectly fit into the Chavista National Assembly, or the little group that surrounded Hugo Chavez. But of course, she is a little bit more of a celebrity than most of the people that surrounded Chavez. Chavez was a celebrity, there was no one else. But. Anyway, this is not about Venezuela, although she does remind me of those people that weren't exactly on the up and up. I want to talk to you about how AOC seems to be embracing things that are similar to the talking points of totalitarian nations. Now, you know what else uh, AOC reminds me of? An actress. I'm telling you guys, as someone that spent time in that world, she reminds me of an actress. I didn't spend that much time in the world of casting and acting, some theater, some short films, but she really does resonate with me with, when it comes to that world. There is nothing wrong with being an actress or a bartender, which she was right before she was a congresswoman. There's nothing wrong with that. The jump, however, from bartender to superstar congresswoman is what boggles my mind. But then I found out that there's actually a casting call for being a congresswoman, I kid you not. So, in 2017, a group called the Justice Democrats held an audition for people that they were gonna run in Congress in several parts of the, of the US. Actual auditions. Back in 2016, we put out a call for nominations. We got over 10,000 nominations. Out of those 10,000 nominations, we found Alexandria. My brother told me that he had sent my nomination in the summer, but I was like literally working out of a restaurant and I was like, there's no way. Bizarre, yes, but reality. They openly admit this, guys. This is not some conspiracy theory that I have going on. It's reality, they admit it. AOC's brother, Gabriel, submitted her for the role. This sort of makes more sense now. AOC didn't run for Congress. She was ran. You know what, guys? Like, that actually makes sense now. You know, now I'm sort of relieved after I found out about that. Now I kind of understand her erratic behavior a little bit more. She's a performer. AOC has called Reagan a racist. She also thinks climate change and student loans should stop an entire generation from having children. She also apologized for being a woman. Because I guess identifying for being a woman while simultaneously being born a woman is apparently a, a privilege that you have to apologize for. What are you, morons? Not to mention, you know what really bugs me about her? She's always acting like a victim. She sounds like many Hollywood types. She stands on the house floor, constantly complaining about being treated a certain way because she's a woman or she's a woman of color. Wait, did you just assume my gender? It's annoying. Stick to policy and stop complaining about your victimhood. What happened recently that made the news everywhere? Well, everywhere that's accurately reporting the news, of course. With the elections happening a few days ago, everyone's on edge right now. Joe Biden is projected the winner. Many of the left are now showing their true colors, starting with AOC, asking if anyone has made a list of Trump supporters. Many followed up with her and said that in fact, yes, we are making a list of Trump supporters. Us, the tolerant party, that one that wants to heal the nation. We are also calling for names to be submitted to the Trump Accountability Project. We had a list like that back home called La Lista Tascon. Basically discriminated anyone that signed a call for a referendum to recall the presidency of Hugo Chavez. That list was published and all those people were discriminated from jobs, etc, etc. This has happened in all totalitarian nations in history. And if you don't know that, you should probably study that a little bit. We don't do that here. 
it makes sense that she was an actress. She's openly repeating words from past totalitarian and authoritarian leaders. Does she know that or is she being told? Is this a script? But she probably didn't study history enough. The problem also is not one Democrat has called her out. And I'm speaking about the politicians. I'm not sure if regular citizens are calling her out. Any official Democrats? Nope, they're not calling her out. In fact, the media is also echoing the statement. For all their messages of unity, they seem to be contradicting themselves. Shut up. Don't dare question the results. Heal with us, you Nazis. When you know who was elected four years ago, <coughs> You know, Hillary Clinton didn't say, hey, wait a minute, this doesn't feel right, stop the count. She didn't say, this isn't right, I'm not going for it. She didn't say any of that. So all of you, suck it up. Michelle Obama said in one tweet that half of the nation voted for racism and lies and that we should not forget that, but also that let us heal, let us heal, Michelle. Those are the actors of the Democratic Party. They are performers telling you to do one thing while doing exactly the opposite. Rules for thee, but not for me. And their newest logo, how similar is it to the Soviet logo of the past? Oh no, but they're not communist. You know who also wasn't a communist? Fidel Castro. He said before he was officially leading the nation that he was not a communist. Chavez said the same thing, that he would never be a communist. Can you believe them? They're acting like them, but no. This must all be a coincidence. I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> Thank you.